Hello, and welcome to Resume Formatting and Style. Today, we're going to spend a little bit of time just focusing on the basics of how to create a resume. First, we want to talk about getting into the right mode and feeling when you're creating your resume. We want you to think about what best represents you, kind of in the same way that you would prepare for a headshot. As you can see in each of the photos in front of you, each of these people are representing them their best selves. They've got their smiles and their emotions, um, and they're each telling us something about who they are as a person. And your resume is similar in that it should tell who you are as a professional and what you will offer an organization. So we want you to think about your experiences to get yourself amped up to represent yourself well, and to be confident in the things that you have to offer to the organization for which you're applying for. That resume is a representation of who you are as a person and a professional. And so we want you to keep the following things in mind when you're creating it. Probably our number one tip, one that everybody should follow without a doubt, is do not use a template to represent yourself. And I have a couple of reasons for which we recommend this. You see the resume that I have as an example to the left of your screen? This is a resume that, no joke, I've probably seen about a dozen or more time from students just at Western Michigan University in the last year alone. That means that many of our students are using the same resume to try to sell themselves to other to employers. And this does not set you apart. One of the problems with templates is when you go in to make your own edits to the document, a lot of times formatting can become off and doesn't look quite right based on how you want to represent information in it and it will end up not looking professional. One thing that you communicate when you use a template is that you use other people's work as your own. Somebody else had the creativity to build that template and it was not you. Another thing I see oftentimes is students representing a skill of Microsoft Office, but then they use a template, which if you are proficient in using Microsoft Word, you should be able to build your own resume from scratch. And that's really what we recommend that you do. One way that you could use a template to your advantage is to get some ideas. It's totally okay to, br to browse resumes, to get a feeling for what you like in the content and how you like things represented, but then recreate it with your own flair and touch. We want your resume to be appealing to the eyes. We want it to be super readable and for all of the right information to stick out. And we'll talk about in the next, the following slides, a couple of the sections that we want to make sure that you have in your resume that will help it be appealing and readable. And then we really, really, really want you to focus on specifying your skills. That's really what a resume is all about, is talking about how you are unique as an employee and what skills you'll bring to a position. When we look at the basic formatting tips, what we're looking for is for your name to be big and bold at the top of the sheet. We want there to be no questions about who is applying for this position. We want your margins to be about 0.5 to 0.7 inches because we want you to fill up as much as that page as possible. Speaking of pages, we want you to have just one page at this point in your career. Most undergraduate students are just going to want that one page, no matter the extensiveness of your experience because of the point of your life that you are in. We want you to choose a readable font. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to use Times New Roman. You can use whatever font is best fitted to your personality as long as it's easily readable and there's no question about what you are reading when you look over it. Go ahead and use 10 to 12 point font for that entire document and you can play around with that based on the amount of content you have for your resume. We want you to be consistent with your lines and your headers. 
So it, your education section should match how your experience section looks. And then lastly, do not use personal pronouns like me and my and I to describe your skills and experience. This is where you talk in third person. There are other places like LinkedIn and your cover letter where you can use I, me, my, for example. Now, let's talk about style. It's really important that you put your own personal touch on it. And that's why some resume advice is just subjective because at the end of the day, you have to represent yourself in the way that you feel is best. However, there are some things that we think typically go over well with employers. The first is having a reverse chronological order style resume, at least for this point in your career. Um, that would be your most recent experience down to your oldest experience. We want you to use bullet points to talk about specific skills that you have, not paragraph form. And then for the most part, we recommend black and white text. We've seen an increase in folks using maybe one color like blue or green to stand out. And that's totally fine if you really think that looks great. Um, just make sure that it looks consistent on different screens. That's That would be one thing that we would recommend for you. And the only exception to this that I would have is for advertising and promotion majors. You can get a little bit more creative because that is the style of your resume. And we want you to be able to show off your skills that you have. Next, we want to make sure that you are including these parts to your resume. We want you to have that heading and that should be a basic name, email, phone. We want you, if you would like, to have an objective statement, but this is an optional portion of the resume. Next, we recommend having education at this point in your career when you are pursuing your bachelor's degree or if you're in a master's program. It's important to have your education at the top just so that people know what point at which you are in your life journey. Um, and that tells a little bit of your story in a little bit of a different way. Once you've gone into your career a few years, it makes sense to move that down if you would like to. Next, we recommend employment. After that, relevant coursework, which is again, an optional uh, portion of the resume. Oftentimes, this is a really great recommendation for students that may not have employment experience or who have some higher level, really interesting coursework that shows off skills that maybe their employment has not yet shown. Next, we recommend leadership volunteer experience section. We really, really recommend that you have this section. So if you do not have any leadership or volunteer experience, we really recommend that that's something that you focus on during your time at Western Michigan University. Next, we recommend having the skills section. Again, we recommend that these are technical and language skills and that other soft skills are rep represented in your employment portion of your resume. Technical skills would be like knowing Python, HTML, other computer programs, um, and then language skills, of course, would be if you know another language or multiple other languages. Lastly, that's where you would include your awards and honors. We really recommend listing everything that you've um, had as an award or honor academically or through employment. Sometimes people don't hold a lot of value in some of the honors they've had through work, like employee of the month. Um, and, and we really want to make sure that you know that people look at that and that shows something about you as an employee. That's it for the basic overview of what we want you to think about when you're first sitting down to build your resume. We'll have future videos that will go into more detail on each of those sections that I glazed over today. Now we want to work with you and support you in your career journey. So please contact the Zane Career Center if you have any questions. You can email us at the address provided or give us a call. And as always, follow us on Instagram 